This is a Xenolink data view analysis for uh, Scott. Uh, this is for uh, Gossam Collective here in October 2014. We'll take a, a quick look at performance pro profile um, and uh, in particular our performance factor number. Our performance factor number, an indication of how effective the golfer is overall utilizing speed or power potential at impact. So it's a combination of the percent of maximum linear speed used, which is 90%, and the percent of maximum angular speed, which is 58%. Uh, so it's fairly typical to see high utilization or retention of, say, club head speed, but a fairly low, although this isn't dramatically low, 60% uh, is you know, roughly, I mean, it's pretty decent. But it, it does tell us that there's probably some timing issues, early release, and then there's some compensation to maintain that 90 plus percent, or 90-ish percent of our uh, club head speed. So, it tells us that from an outcome effectiveness or an outcome perspective that there's, there is um, uh, reasonable utilization of, of power, but there is timing issues or coordination issues. So when you see a fairly high linear output or club head speed output and a, you know, a, a comparatively lower angular retention, that tells us for the most part that um, output's good, but it's through compensation there's some timing or coordination type issues. And so that's what we'll look at as we move forward here into the kinetic length is really the coordination of our power generation and, and the coordination of the effort and uh, a little bit better as to how that speed's being produced and what's happening. So right away, you can tell that this is an arm dominated swing. So you've got, you know, big spike in arms, arm club relationship is, is really the dominant factor in this movement pattern. Torso mostly just turning to move and position. Uh, and then and then to hang on and compensate a little bit through the impact zone. The club, the, the relationship between the arms and the club is really good, but the timing of that release is early. Again, you know, we're talking milliseconds, but early, and then there's a, quite a bit of deceleration with uh, body segment compensation, sort of turn and, and sort of hang on to that club. So in, in, in the sort of the summer, you've got an arm-dominated swing with very little lower body or core contribution in, in terms of power. Uh, mostly that's positional. Um, and you've got an early release because of the timing issues, and then you've got compensation at the last at the last bit of the swing. So you've got essentially swing being or club being released out in here. So you've reached your maximum angular velocity out in this zone, and the last foot or so is is really just you know uh, from a speed. See, so you, you can see what you can see here is that obviously the the um, the angle continues to release, but the speed at which it's being released is dramatically dropping off. Um, and the turn, although the, the club is releasing, the, the maintenance of that speed or maintaining speed through impact really becomes a body compensation kind of issue. So what we really want to do here is we want to get our lower body and our core more um, involved in the process and take some of the pressure off the arm and make use of this good relationship um, only closer to the impact zone. So you're going to be getting not only more power, but really efficiency of movement. And efficiency of movement is going to have impact on you know, everything from consistency and, and accuracy with, with ball striking um, and, and playing all the way to um, endurance during uh, rounds or multiple rounds if, if it's competitive. So you've got a lot of uh, a benefit from becoming more efficient and using the bigger muscles, bigger body segments a little bit more effectively. When you've got um, uh, lower body issues, you want to certainly look at lower body mechanics and see if it's a mechanical issue or if it's more of a speed development issue. In this case, it's a little bit more of, um, I would say, mechanical issue in that you've got good, for the most part, good lateral stability, good dynamic rotational change of direction, but very little actual forward weight shift. Now, typically you're looking at about 17 centimeters. Here we're down at 6 centimeters and you've got lateral instability through the impact zone because the arms um, did so much work early that affects the planes of movement and things like that, the timing of the movement, so you're going to get lateral instability. So rather than stabilizing and rotating into that lead hip, that lead side, you're going to get some release of that um, to allow the club to track a little bit more effectively. So this is, the, the, this is a very rotational swing, um, which is okay, but you even within the context of having a slightly more rotational swing, you want to have a little bit more forward weight shift and you want that weight shift to then um, stabilize through the impact zone and, and you want to capitalize on it. So one of the things you'll notice is that the initial movement of the, of the lower body is almost exclusively rotational for the first almost third, maybe even close to half of the movement, you've got predominantly rotation. You want them to be blended together. So even if you have 
less than average um, forward movement, which is okay, uh, you want the forward movement or the linear component to be blended a little bit more effectively with the rotational. So that's a definite area we want to work on. As far as the core stability um, goes, you've got uh, uh, you know pretty good forward flexion stability, pretty good lateral stability, posture pretty good, and then you get a pretty good extension right then pattern. So overall, core stability is quite nice, and and posture is right where you would expect it to be through the impact. So, so you've got a good stable base, we know that, um, and because of the good stable base and the general, although we're not producing the speed and the power of the low binding core, the movement is fine, and so you're getting good core stability, which is a good thing. So we've got to capitalize on the, the positives, the good relationship between the arms and the club, the good stability of the lower body, and the good core stability, and create um, off of that, off of those pros, improve the dynamics of the movement, especially with respect to using lower body and our, and our core more effectively, our torso more effectively. Loading, we're not even considered because really because of the dynamic, you see the upper body outpaces the lower body almost immediately. There's no real load dynamic at the core, so we're missing out on that muscular preload opportunity. Same thing with the upper body. I mean, uh, torso precedes the arms by a hair. You get somewhat of a little bit of a load, but it's not real effective. So muscular loading will come more as a function of creating a light, slightly better overall sequencing pattern. And the last thing we'll take a quick look at is the release of, or the, 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 the uh, uh, speed dynamics coming into the impact zone. You'll see very symmetric um, uh, path between up and down and out, which means that the, the, the path of the club is going to be fairly symmetric, won't be too steep, won't be too flat. You're going to be tracking, for the most part, around your spine, around your core, um, and you're going to be delivering the club uh, pretty darn effectively. A little bit, of, I mean, just beautiful to drag. You may a little bit of tendency to come uh, outside in and up a little bit through the impact zone, but for the most part, very clean delivery. So you've got good delivery of the club as far as the direction of applied speed, but we are definitely in the deceleration mode, and we're definitely... Um, compensating to get that speed there for the last, you know, you know, foot or so of the of that path. So we want to improve um, overall the utilization of the lower body and the core, the torso as a function of power, and we want to um, blend that more effectively with a really good arm club dynamic. And then we'll see um, improved power, but more importantly, improved efficiency, efficiency of movement, consistency of movement.